The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Hello, and welcome back to Element 14 Presents. I'm Katie, and in today's episode, we're going to make a wall-mounted barometer. Amazing hacks. Inspired designs. Each week, Element 14 Presents brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. So most wall barometers have just got a needle and they display the pressure based on the position of the needle. Quite often they have a little pin needle that you can twist to set to the current reading and then when the pressure changes you can see which way it's going and determine how the weather is changing. However this requires you to remember to set that position. So I'm going to see if I can use LEDs to display the current pressure and a history of recent pressures so you can see which way it's changing without having to remember to do anything. So for the parts we're going to have a microcontroller so we can go for the Arduino and then we need a barometer sensor also going to have a real-time clock so we know when the last reading was taken so if the power gets interrupted it knows if what it's working with is current or not and an output in the form of near pixel LEDs so we will display the pressure on a scale the barometric pressure sensor will probably also have a thermometer in it so we could get temperature and display this on the near pixels as well So let's take a look at the parts we're going to use for this project. I started out looking at barometric pressure sensors. A lot of them uh, have footprints that you'd need to make your own PCB to mount. So I started looking at prototype boards, breakout boards, uh, and found these click boards. So this is pressure six out of the click board range. Um, so that's going to give us our pressure readings. This one has a voltage select, so we can choose between 3.3 and 5 volts. So that means we can communicate with an Arduino. So I've got the Arduino and the Arduino Uno click shield. Now this has got two slots. So in the second slot, I'm going to use a real-time clock. So we know what time each pressure sensor reading was taken. So we can remember them and give a history of readings over time. Now instead of buying a ready-made real-time clock click compatible board I've decided I'm going to make my own out of strip board so I've got a DS1307 in crystal and then that's also going to have an output on it that we can connect up with our near pixel and this is what I'm going to use to display the current and the previous pressure readings sort of on a circular scale like a traditional barometer so my first thing to do is we're going to move our voltage selector across uh, and make up the real-time clock strip board to go in bay two. So our pressure board can be run on 3.3 volts or 5 volts and it has a little zero ohm resistor as a link that you move between the pads depending on which voltage you want to run it at. So all we need to do is I'm going to use this hot air rework tool and a pair of tweezers and slide the resistor across to the other pad and then it will be running on 5 volts for the Arduino. So now we're going to make our real-time clock board. I'm making this to the standard click width so it will fit in our Arduino shield. Now for the real-time clock board, I'm just using the typical operating circuit that's from the data sheet and I'm adding in a three pin header to go to our near pixel strip. On GitHub is a circuit diagram for 
at what's connecting to what and which pins to the Arduino. So once I'd finished and I put it on top of the click shield, I noticed that the real-time clock board was sticking out quite away from the depth of the Arduino board. So the easy fix for this was I unsoldered the coin cell and flipped it so it was vertical, used a bit of wire to solder the free pin back down to the strip board. And now when it goes on top of the Arduino, it goes down the side of the Arduino, so hardly taking up any more footprint than the board itself. So I've got the Adafruit near pixel strip. This is the 144 pixels per meter strip. So we're only going to need half of it for this one project. So I'm going to cut it in half. You can cut it along the break point. So this one's got a point you can cut between every pixel. So I'm also going to take the coating off it because we don't need the weatherproof coating and it comes shipped with a connector on the ground and data in lines on the front end of it. So I'm going to cut that off and then I'm going to do ground data in and the red onto a little Molex female header connector and then that can plug straight into the header pins that we've put on our PCB. So before I started coding, I made myself a quick sheet of what I was planning to do. So I've drawn uh, the barometer in the middle and a ring of near pixels around the outside. So I've decided that two thirds of it is going to be the pressure and the bottom third will be the temperature and I will have a gap of one LED in between the two to separate that off. So we've got 72 LEDs, so two thirds of that is pressure and a third is temperature. So then for the temperature, I've changed it now so we've only got the gap of two, so there's one each side. So that gives us 20 LEDs. Uh, we're going to display a temperature range of minus 10 to 30. For the area I live in, that is the expected temperature range. So that gives us, we'll be displaying two degrees C on each pixel over the temperature. And then for the pressure, we've got the 48 um, that we started with. Uh, I want to display a range of 960 to 1070 HPA. That seems to be what most available barometers will display. So that's a range of 110 HPA we want to be showing. Um, so over the 48 that worked out to that, but by taking the two from the gap and making just a gap of one, that gave us 50 LEDs, which was a more rounded number of 2.2 HPA per LED. I'm going to display history. So usually you get a pressure reading uh, and then you'll have another pressure reading, but you don't know if it's going that way or that way. So I'm going to do a log once an hour uh, and I'm going to display the last 24 hours of readings. Um, so I'm thinking I'll make that so the current reading will be the brightest and older ones will get lighter, duller uh, as they get older. So that's the idea. So this is the idea I've had for the code. So we're going to do the setup, creating variables, initializing the devices uh, and all that sort of stuff. And then our main body of the code will go on to see if it's on the hour. So we only want one reading every hour. So the easiest way is to see if minutes are at zero. If it's not, we're going to wait 60 seconds and go back and check again. So if it is on the hour, then we want to take a reading, so we go down. I'm going to take the pressure and the temperature reading. Then I'm going to convert the reading to the scale we want for the LEDs. So this is using what we worked out earlier. So we've got 2.2 per LED for the pressure and 2 degrees per LED for the temperature. So then once we've worked that out, I'm going to have an array, I'll store which LEDs are 
on for that reading. So I'm going to store 24 LED positions. So um, we've got 24 hours worth of data uh, and then I'm going to display everything that's in the array from oldest to newest and increasing in brightness as the readings get newer. So we can see how it's changing and then we'll go back up and see again if it's on the hour and continue like that. So now we can take a look at the actual code. Hey, how would you like to get free stuff like this? The Element 14 Road Test Program sends you free products in exchange for detailed reviews posted to the community. Head over to element14.com to see past reviews and apply to be a road tester today. So when I found this pressure sensor, uh, it looked fairly straightforward to use. I thought it would make it quick and easy. Um, when I went to find the libraries, I discovered they're only available for the company that makes its own compiler, which isn't a free compiler. So I looked up the actual part that was on the board. I found libraries for a product that was very similar in the same sort of range. However, it was a more basic version. Uh, I tried these libraries for the Arduino and it didn't seem to be working with this chip. I'm not sure why, um, but I decided just to get it working, I would write my own library for this chip. So let's have a look at that. So it's fairly basic. I've only put in what I needed to use for this. So in our H file, here we've got the registers defined masks. I've commented some of them out that we're not going to use at all. Uh, and then I've just got get pressure and get temperature because that's all I've needed for this project. So then in here we've got, so I've got a function for read and one for write. So these are all from the data sheet. Uh, so if we come down to here, I've just taken the bus communication information from that. And then these are all our registers and the data. So using that, I've got uh, a begin. So this takes it so in the data sheet, we've got a mode transition. So going from power down to reset to standby, we're going into one shot. So we go from those and then for get pressure, I'm then going in there. I'm doing the right that we need to do to get to tell it that we want the pressure. Uh, and then we're reading the data and then we're returning that. So we are on the data sheet, we can see it tells us how the pressure is formatted. So we can see that we've got eight bits there, eight there, and then five at the end. And then that's all being done there and returned. And then, oh no, there. Uh, so that's for the pressure. And then we're doing similar for the temperature. We're reading the temperature and then returning the value. So I'm returning it in counts. And then in our code, we're going to do the conversion. So we can divide by 2048 for HPA and 32 to get to degree C. So that's all I've done for that. It's fairly basic. So then onto our Arduino code for the actual board. And here's what the code actually looks like. So we are including the real-time clock library, the pressure sensor that I wrote earlier, uh, and the Adafruit Near pixels. So we're setting up our sensors and the pixels, uh, and then making our variables, and then we can go into the setup. So we look for our sensors, make sure they're present, adjust the time for the when you program it to sync in with the computer. So that means we don't have to set it ourselves on the board. Uh, and then just for some debugging error, just for checking, I've then just printing to the serial, the date and the time. That's just for my own checking. We then begin the pixels and clear them all. I'm doing a little startup sequence just to check they're all working correctly. Uh, and then setting up our data array. So 
then I'm taking a reading in our main loop. So if the time is on the hour or if it's at startup, so in setup we made this startup. So the very first time it's turned on, it will do a reading no matter what the time is. So we clear the LEDs, we take our pressure sensor reading, we take the temperature from it, we then work out which LEDs and I'm storing those in the next location to be stored in the array. So that means we will get a continuous loop of 24. Then we are coming down here. I'm setting the pressure and setting the temperature on the near pixels. Then I'm doing fading. So the next time it goes through, it will be a lighter color. And then the last reading is the current reading and is a very white color of that shade, of that color. And then we go back and if the time, if it wasn't on the hour, we'll do that delay and then we'll go back around again. And that's all there is to the code. I tried to find a nice glass front for it, which I managed to find going through the kitchen cupboards. This is a Pyrex storage bowl, which is perfect for the round front. Next, I'm gonna use a set square to find the center of the piece of wood. I'm gonna put a bolt through the center. This is so we can use it to pivot tools. Then I'm using the jigsaw to do a rough cut around the circle. Then I'm using a rebate tool on the router to make a shallow groove for the glass to sit in. Then I'm using a molding cutter on the router to shape the edge. Next is a hole saw to, to make a hole. This is for our Arduino and all the rest of the electronics to sit in. Then I'm using a router to make a little ledge around this hole. This is a piece of polycarb that I've cut it with the jigsaw to fit inside. And here is it waxed. And I've mounted the Arduino to the backing plate. And I'm putting double-sided sticky tape onto the back of the near pixels and sticking that around the inside of the glass bowl. So this is my silhouette cameo. I've made a design for a pressure and temperature scale to go around the face of the barometer. And this is it cutting it out of vinyl. So now this is completed, I'm going to weed the excess vinyl away from the design. Now it hasn't done a particularly good job of the very small numbers. I'd sort of expected this because the numbers are right on the limit of what the machine can do. So as we can see, I've just taken all the numbers off because so many of them hadn't come out, but we can still see the scale um, and where it is on the scale. Uh, and I might add the numbers in later using something different. I can use this transfer film and press it over our design. This means we can peel the backing paper off and it will keep the design all in shape. Then we can put it on our glass all as one, give it a really good firm press. And then when we peel the backing paper off, we'll be left with the design on the glass. So now we're ready to assemble it and I'm just going to use the hot glue gun to stick the glass dome to the front and the backing plate to the back. And here we have it, our barometer. So I've left it running for a little while and we can see that the pressure is currently increasing. It shows it's going from badder weather to fairer weather and as the evening's gone on the temperature is decreasing so the finish is really nice I'm really pleased with how it's come out so we finished our wall mounted barometer we've got the barometric pressure sensor taking a reading every hour with the real-time clock board that we made to fit the click shield we've got it displaying the current pressure and temperature on the near pixels and we've got it displaying the last 24 hours of readings as well and we've made 
a nice glass and oak case for it, which makes it really nicely finished. I was really pleased with finding the glass food bowl. That worked really well as a case. If I was doing it again, I would probably find a different barometric pressure sensor. If I'd found one with good Arduino libraries, it would have saved us having to write our own. But all in all, it's worked really well. Have you ever made a barometer? Or have you ever repurposed a kitchen item for your project? Let us know on the Element 14 community at element14.com forward slash presents. And we'll see you next time.